they eat merge what do you know about it so we can get we can get an idea of what the general audience knows about the eat merge <laughs> the it is like uh, you know dharmesh darshan announcing dharkan 2 okay <laughs> he's been doing this for many years but it's never happened <laughs> you know either uh, sunil chetty is not ready or akshay kumar is not ready or shilpa chetty is not ready so, i you know finally ne- looks like oh, they're all coming together i never in my life did i think that the eat merge will be compared to dhadkan 2 we've been anticipating this for a very long time but i'm very sad to know cash that i don't know too many details about this i know that we're going from hmm. proof of work to proof of stake and today we will understand a lot more in depth about what is the eat merge you guys want to stick around This is a huge deal in the world of crypto. Cash, take it away. But before we like talk too much about the merge, I think we should do a little quick story time. Let's do it. Oh. Story time with Cash. Let's, Let's go. Our story begins here back in 2009, which is the year that Bitcoin was born. Imagine Bitcoin like a person, right? It is born and it now needs a car to get around. As it's going car shopping, it decides that the engine is really the most important part of the car. And so it has three main criteria. Number one, it needs something that is reliable, something that's proven to work. Number two, it's got to be safe. Bitcoin, not a great driver. You know, the engine might explode, something like that. So it's got to be like a safe, reliable kind of engine. Uh, and number three, it wants it to be strong, right? A lot of horsepower. So it decides ultimately to go for a muscle car, something like this, right? If we then fast forward a few years, Bitcoin has a younger brother. We'll call it Ethereum, right? And ETH also needs a car to get around. Mm. Incidentally, this image was actually generated by Dolly when I looked mm. for like teenage Ethereum. So I thought that was pretty fun. Mm. But because it's a newer generation, whatever else, it's got some new criteria. And the big new criteria is that it wants to be efficient, right? Mm. Like a lot of young people these days, they understand that the climate matters and so on. It wants something more efficient. But very sadly, uh, the electric engine that it actually would want to get instead of the gas engine, it cannot afford. And so we can see Vitalik here is crying. He's very sad. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Since day one, they it grew up saying, "I need the electric engine." Just couldn't couldn't get there, couldn't get it. So it went and got the same engine as Bitcoin. Fast forward again another seven years, and some good news: Vitalik and Ethereum are rich. It can finally start to afford the upgrade and change out the engine. But here is the crazy part. And this is what makes the story so fun and interesting. The engine upgrade can only happen if ETH does not stop driving. Right? It wants the new engine, but it needs the car to continue going. How the fuck do you swap engines in a moving car? Right? Pretty complicated thing to do. So it takes years to figure out the plan, and ultimately, this is what it comes up with. Right? Step number one in the plan: build a replica car with an electric engine on the side. Step number two: get that replica car to drive at the same speed as ETH, like down the highway. Like imagine two Lambos going down perfectly in parallel, and then at the critical moment, as they're going, swap the engine out of the replica car into the proper ETH car. That is the plan. It sounds crazy because it is a crazy plan, but it's the only kind of option that ETH has here, right? They practice three times to make sure that it kind of works, and then they scheduled the final live attempt when the engines are going to get swapped, and they call that the merge. Merge. Wow. wow. First of all, I am amazed at this analogy. Cash, well fucking done. Probably the best presentation <laughs> we've had so far. I'm just waiting for this is like a Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> yeah, right? too fast, too butterin. <laughs> 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 All right. So, the, like, what does this story actually mean? We'll go through each one of these, and now we'll go a little bit slower. But if you only understand that like ninety second story, you've got like most of it in your head. Uh, so it's going to get a bit more technical. Here we go. The engine in that previous story is what's called a consensus mechanism. Right? It's a technical term. A consensus mechanism. All you need to know is it's a way that a blockchain gets to decide what is true and what is not. It's a really important part, right? Like as important as the engine is to the car, the consensus mechanism is that important. to any blockchain so the consensus mechanism is of two types there is proof of work and proof of stake proof of work That's is what bitcoin uses exactly right though bitcoin uses proof of work which is like a gas engine right and the way proof of work works you can there's a ton of youtube videos about this you can find it elsewhere but in short you have these guys called miners who use all these like heavy duty graphics cards like basically computer chips to guess at random numbers and whoever guesses the random number of the first gets the opportunity to validate the transactions and they get a little reward from it like a gas engine though this is very kind of wasteful but bitcoin not so worried about that at the time proof of work was actually invented back in 1993 so it was already like 20 plus years old by the time bitcoin came on the scene mm. the second criteria it had had to be safe right <laughs> when we talk about blockchains we're oftentimes worried about these things called civil attacks the idea behind civil uh, civil attack is where a system needs to prove that 
state players involved within the system are in the individuals and there are no replicas of those individuals. So yeah, so one example would be where your government IDs are issued to you and you can't replicate or duplicate your, your ID card, right? So that's a civil registration system. When you have a, a, a network, a cryptographic network like this, where anybody can join in and it's permissionless, you want to make sure that no one person is pretending to be a lot of people and then is able to kind of take over the entire network as a result. Proof of work is very good at this, right? It, can, it is susceptible to some attacks, what's called a 51% attack. But for that to happen, 51% of all the miners in the world have to agree to go together and then do some bad stuff. So it's hard to attack. Proof of work is very strong. It's very easy to decentralize, particularly when Bitcoin started. When Bitcoin first started, uh, like you could do Bitcoin mining on just like your normal everyday laptop, right? Because there was very little hash power in the network. Um, and that was really good because the more decentralized the network is, the stronger it is, right? Remember, though, when ETH came on the scene, it had a new criteria. It wanted to be efficient. And actually, this one works pretty one-to-one with the story because it wants to be energy efficient in particular. Proof of work is very wasteful because all around the world, you have all these miners dumping all this electrical costs into these graphic cards so they, they can guess these random numbers, right? That requires a lot of electricity, as many people would have heard right now. Ethereum wanted to overcome this. But as I said, it couldn't really do that from the very beginning. But it had this idea that it wanted to go to this other consensus mechanism, as you say, proof of stake. At a very high level, the simple way to think about it is instead of miners, we have validators. And miners use electricity to show their commitment. They use the electricity as collateral for the network, basically. Validators just use ETH. They just use actual money as the collateral for the network. Critically, though, in order to make sure that it remains safe, if you get caught cheating in a proof of stake system, you get slashed. You lose your tickets to the lottery. And so with this kind of system, uh, it's much, much more efficient, right? You don't have all this electricity being burned all over the world just to guess random math numbers. So cash is proof of stake as a concept. So this was thought out by whom? This was thought out by Vitalik or Ethereum. It's something that is thought, thought out right now, or it was a concept that existed, which is being ad- uh, you know, adopted into this uh, particular problem. Yeah, I, so I don't know exactly who the people responsible for inventing it are. I don't believe it's Vitalik, though he might have been a part of that as well. Proof of stake as an idea was kind of put forward in, I think, around like 2012-ish, uh, right? So it's certainly much, much younger. It was invented by Satoshi Stekamoto. Are you happy now? <laughs> <laughs> the next part of the story, right? The crazy part, the too fast, too buterin part is to do this engine swap without even stopping. Mm. This is where things get crazy. That is just reality, right? In truth, you cannot just turn off Ethereum. There's not like a little light switch that you can just kick Correct. in a back room. That's kind of the whole point. The replica car that I mentioned before, that is something called the beacon chain. The beacon chain is a term you might have heard already. This is a version of Ethereum that uses proof of stake. And it has been running for the last almost two years in parallel to the real chain. The basic idea was, hey, Ethereum will continue to be proof of work for a long time. Let's have proof of stake start. And then we can just kind of test and make sure that it works out. Okay. So it copied all the transaction history up until 2020, uh, December 2020. And then going forward, it was just proof of stake to validate it. No actual transactions. Like if you've used Ethereum in the last two years, you were still using the proof of work chain. Mm -hmm. But all of those transactions were just copied onto the beacon chain, onto the replica car. The next part of the plan, driving at the same speed, uh, that is the beacon chain running right now. So as I say, in the last two years, it has just been running at the same exact speed as Ethereum proof of work. Already now, it has more than 14 million Ethereum staked to it, and it's paying out interest. And then as we talked about, that switch without stopping, that actual engine translation, that is going to be the merge, right? You're merging the new engine into the old car, basically. That's why it's called the merge instead of something else. (laughs) 